Class is back, and now more of the Weather Classroom. Thanksgiving giblet gravy like his mother makes? We have got to get that boy a girlfriend. Anyway, no gravy for Jason. He's up north in the Windy City checking out the other secret ingredients hey. of severe winter weather. Eat your heart out, Brandon, and forget your mom's giblet gravy or whatever you eat. We're in a land of steaks, sausage, and Sammy Sosa, baby. Chicago, Illinois. This is a great town, and it gets more than its share of wicked winter weather here. Chicago is right on Lake Michigan, and the lake provides plenty of the second major element of severe winter weather. Water. Two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. Sometimes it's liquid. Sometimes it's water vapor and clouds. Or at least that's the way it starts out. But when freezing cold air and water get together, water doesn't stay liquid or vapor very long. If it's on the ground or on the roads, it becomes ice. If it's in the air, it becomes one of several flavors of frozen precipitation. Let's see, we got snow, sleet, freezing rain, hail. Nope, rewind. Hail is frozen precipitation, but it almost always happens during spring and summer during thunderstorms. That's pretty bizarre. So hail is disqualified from our list of winter precipitation. But who needs it? We've got plenty to talk about. Let's start with snow. Fluffy as a bunny's tail, blanketing the landscape. Isn't it great? Kids romp in it, have snowball wars, and make snowmen. Sometimes, though, it's not all fun and games. Snow has its dark side, too. Just an inch or two of snow can shut down cities that aren't equipped to deal with it. Now, a big northern city like Chicago here gets a pretty good bit of snow, about 35 inches each winter. But way back in 1921 in Silver Lake, Colorado, they got 76 inches of snow in one day. But that doesn't impress them in Tamarack, California. Ten years earlier, in 1911, they got 390 inches of snow in one month. Anytime you find yourself around that much snow, be careful where you step and what you say. Sometimes all it takes is a loud noise to start one of the most powerful forces in nature, a white monster called an avalanche. Funny, you guy. Okay, let's clear one thing up right now. What exactly is snow? How is it formed? And under what conditions? And what makes snow different from sleet and freezing rain? Inquiring minds want to know. So it works like this. Water exists in the clouds in the form of vapor, and when it gets cold enough, this water vapor freezes into crystals. Now, if the temperature between the clouds and the ground is below freezing, or pretty close anyway. These crystals fall to the ground as snow. Snow crystals are really amazing. Out of the trillions of them that fall to the earth each winter, no two are exactly alike. They're all variations on beautiful six-sided shapes like these. What we call snowflakes are actually little collections of snow crystals. And while there are an infinite number of snow crystal shapes, there are four basic types of snowflakes. Which type you see depends on how cold the air was when the snowflakes were formed. Check this out. From 32 degrees Fahrenheit down to 20 degrees Fahrenheit, snowflakes fall as needles. From 20 degrees down to zero, snowflakes fall in this classic dendrite shape. From zero degrees to minus 20, they form hexagonal plates. And when it's colder than 20 below, they become these incredible hexagonal columns. Now before we move down our winter precipitation checklist, there's a specific kind of snow that people here in Chicago see a lot of. It's called lake effect snow. Lake effect snow happens when you've got a large body of water, and I think Lake Michigan qualifies. And you've got lots of cold air. I'll give it another month. What happens is this. When a really cold air mass moves over a warmer lake surface, warmth and moisture is added to the lower level of the cold air mass. The warmer air rises fast and forms heavy bands of snow squalls within the cold air, and bingo, you've got snow in your boat there, Skipper. No, I really can't stand snow. Okay, enough about snow. What about sleet? I mean, what's up with that? Well, sleet is basically snow that melts and refreezes on its way down and forms small pellets of ice just before it hits the ground. As it falls, if it hits other water droplets or ice particles, it absorbs them. 
and just gets even bigger. Oh, sure. Snow, snow, snow. How about some freezing rain? Freezing rain? That would have to start in the clouds as snow, but melts completely on the way down. But right near the ground, it's still colder than freezing. So cold that when rain hits, it freezes into ice on contact. Now, these two forms of winter precipitation, sleet and freezing rain, can be a lot more trouble than snow. Why? Because ice can be a real pain. Ice is even slicker and more slippery than snow. It's heavier, too. It can totally cause more damage to trees and power lines than snow ever will. I, I really can't bear fleet and freezing rain. You are so asking for it. <laughs> that hurt. Mommy. North to know a lot about ice. Here in Atlanta, Georgia, it's a balmy 75 degrees outside, and most people are walking around in shorts. But inside here, it's a bit cooler, and we're hanging out with some friends of ours that make their living on the ice. The National Hockey League's Atlanta Thrashers. might not look much like scientists, but they all know about the scientific principle that keeps them on the ice. It's called pressure. Yep, the weight of your body, or in this case, my body, creates pressure that literally melts the ice under your feet, or my feet. You get the idea. Anyway, this makes a little thin, very slippery layer of water between your feet and the ice. There's actually no temperature change going on at all. It's all pressure. So it's not the ice at all you're slipping on, it's actually water. A little close there. Every ice skater you see actually has a little layer of water between the skate blade and the ice. Check this out. Pressure is what cuts these blade marks into the ice. The little layer of water that's left over reduces the friction between the blade and the ice. So you glide along like you're on, well, ice. That's it, hockey boy. You want a piece of this? Get ready to rumble. Don't go away. The Weather Classroom will be right back. <laughs> 